I talk a lot about censorship in video games, but you may have noticed that those video games predominantly are anime art styled. Companies like Sony and Valve have taken such a hard stance against this art style because they've said that it's hard to tell if a character is underage or not. A character could be labeled as 18, but if at first glance they're in a high school setting, that could be misinterpreted and companies don't really want to deal with a potential backlash. But I have been trying to cover more anime censorship and the industry in general because the same people who have forced their way into the comics industry and completely annihilated it are some of the same people who want to take down anime too, which is really the focus of today's video. This also isn't the first time that people have tried to tear down the industry, but the future is looking pretty grim. So, today the article that we are going to kind of glance through and I'm going to give you my opinions on is from RT, No Butts, Nudity or Guns, Thanks. Social justice warriors who destroyed superhero comics turn their censorship sites on anime. Fans of Japanese animation are getting increasingly angry at the politically correct reworking of the cartoons when they're translated into English. A recent announcement about anime production has alarmed consumers worried about the intrusion of political correctness into their entertainment. There are very few people that actually are involved in hobbies like watching anime and playing video games that want the intrusion of political correctness into these forms of entertainment. There are some, but very few. Funimation, a company that translates and distributes anime in English and which has a long record of censoring the English um, language versions of the original Japanese shows, has joined the key committee overseeing anime production. This isn't new. This happened like a week and a half ago, I think. I hadn't covered it, um, unfortunately, because a lot of Susie Lou drama was going on, but very important for the industry in general. Funimation's business model is, apart from issuing age-rated DVDs, to make anime accessible to as wide an audience as possible by altering the original material so that it is suitable for American children's channels. Keyword here, American children's channels. Becoming part of the production committee allows Funimation to influence studios directly to make anime more family-friendly inhibiting creators from producing stories aimed at young audiences. Of course, family friendly. That's all these companies care about. And the reason why they only care about making family-friendly content these days is because they think that it will reach a wider audience, but I'll talk about that more in a second after we read this. Critics fear that it will simply allow Funimation to carry out more widespread censorship uh, ship of anime cartoons. The PC changes Funimation has been accused of making, including removing a reference to the word but in the series Nekopara, editing out suggestive content for the D DVD release of Dance in the Vampire Bun, and uh, censoring swearing words in one episode of Hagani. Now, Funimation is a company that was once widely respected, but I personally have lost a lot of faith in them at this point. They canceled interspecies reviewers for falling outside of their standards when they clearly knew what content would be in the show when they greenlit it. They've censored jokes in series like Bow Fury and Dragon Ball Super. These are just a few, a few examples of the many instances of censorship that they have done. And that doesn't make me respect you any more as a company. All they want to do is make things as politically correct as they can so they never have anyone complaining about their content because they're trying to appeal to specific groups of people who won't even watch their content. This is the same issue that is going on in other forms of entertainment and even gaming. We have all of these companies wanting to make everything as politically correct and up-to-date as they can, but they will remove anything that 
would offend people or trigger people. They will remove lines from games. They will remove and censor and change dialogue options in movies and also in anime. They'll remove scenes altogether because, of course, they're worried of people misinterpreting them. Or maybe you scroll down your, your feed on one of the social medias and you would be offended. And then, of course, they'd have a big situation on their hands. They don't want that. So they are trying to wipe the slate clean in a way and get rid of anything that could be misinterpreted. Therefore, it just ruins a lot of the content that we're watching. A lot of the people that would even complain about a scene being a little bit too edgy or a dialogue line maybe being a little bit offensive, the people that aren't that it would complain about it aren't even the people that would be watching it. Most people that would be watching it wouldn't think twice about it. They wouldn't complain about it. It continues with other notorious changes carried out by American companies involved in dubbing anime shows include the removal of guns, One Piece, and Yu-Gi-Oh!, changing character traits, City Hunter, and altering relationships, Sailor Moon. Other areas of censorship have included violence, threats, revealing costumes, sexual references, religion, and death. A lot of those um, it do happen in the video game industry as well, but most companies censor things uh, for... China to get into the Chinese region so they can make that sweet, sweet money. Uh, and this also allows them to bend the knee to the vocal minority in the West, of which most of them won't even watch these shows. Localization and censorship. Anime writers, artists, and studios are usually Japanese, Korean, and East Asian. Studios partner with companies such as Funimation, Crunchyroll, and the now defunct 4Kids TV to handle the dubbing and distribution of anime. Localization is the process of translation, um, dubbing, and editing non-English language material for English-speaking consumers. The localization process involves explaining common social, cultural, and linguistical subtitles that are not comprehensible to the average non-Japanese viewer. In some cases, shows are partially rewritten to radically alter stories. J Japanese producers are famously resistant to Western political correctness. However, the localization stage allows Westerners to impose their own moral and social standards on Japanese materials. I've talked a lot about localization teams bringing games over from Japan and whatnot and changing and altering dialogue that they find to be offensive. That is ridiculous. Ridiculous. And the end of the article, which I wanted to read, most importantly, why we should care. The Rising of the Shield Hero was deemed controversial in the USA because it included a storyline about a false accusation of rape. In the politically correct era of the Me Too movement, the suggestion that a woman might make a false accusation was considered provocative. The listen and believe agenda was deemed to apply to fiction. If Western partners, so politicized and vulnerable to the social media pressure, were involved in assessing storylines, would such a plot be approved? Western companies, staffed by individuals with assertive political and social outlooks, will attempt to influence J Japanese studios, imposing their own beliefs, when progressives have the ability to meddle in the creative process that they will not hold back, even if it leads to a disastrous financial consequences. We already have evidence of this in the collapse of the American superhero comics. Now, I just want to say that a lot of Japanese companies truly do not care about the Western market or being politically correct in our standards, in Western standards. But some companies do care because they see, you know, they see potential profit in, in the market, in, in us in general. And if you want to do business with companies like Funimation, you need to be politically correct and you need to follow their rules, which is the problem here. It's not like Funimation is saying if your content is properly rated we will allow it onto our platform no no they themselves are forcing censorship they're forcing companies to censor their content they are censoring content when it's being localized it's a big problem but I also just wanted to note very quickly that the article says that they're trying to insert western culture into Japanese storytelling and I do mostly agree with this but it is a bit of an overgeneralized 
organization and what is going on is the insertion of a certain ideology of political correctness that is not part of my culture and I'm from the West. I did just want to make a note of that. Um, that's all that I really wanted to read in this article today, you guys. I do think that, yes, some of the people that destroyed comics that are trying to force their way into the gaming industry and have everything be politically correct are the same people that are turning their sights on anime. Anime is just under attack yet again, and I don't think this, this is going to end anytime soon, unfortunately. Um, I think that we are going to see more people try to attack anime, and of course, yeah, even just yesterday in the previous video here on the channel, I discussed, you know, censorship and, and people trying to, trying to get steam to change their guidelines because they think that they're outrageous, but let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you think that it is ridiculous that companies like Funimation you know, censor what they want in localization processes. Do you think that that's their right and that they can do that? If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe. But of course, if you did not, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, and I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.